Nick Baldwin for BloodyElbow.com here with a UFC heavyweight fighter. He is Tim Tim Johnson. Tim, really do appreciate the time here in Fargo, North Dakota at your gym, the Academy of Combat Arts. Really appreciate the time. How are you? Ah, not too bad. Don't worry about it. There's not much to do up here anyway. So, you know. <laughs> Other than a bit of shopping for Canadians, I guess that's... Uh, Anything that's to keep us busy, we'll do it. A <laughs> yes. um, little disappointed, got to say. No mustache. Nope, uh, no mustache. Uh, that's uh, kind of a... Uh, rich in camp like, uh, in camp thing um and i don't know if you notice like the mustaches have been kind of evolving every every fight a little bit um and it's just every new fight deserves a new mustache so you gotta shave it off and regrow it what's the secret to it i mean it seems, as you said it seems to get better every time um you know i just uh feed it cheese and it just kind of flows right on out awesome um i gotta ask uh you know the nickname i i thought you were called the bear uh, but then I went back and realized Bruce Buffer hasn't been calling you that. Your Twitter is that. Yeah, uh, my Twitter handle is that. Uh, from that was my uh, gunner. Like I was when I was deployed, I was a gunner. That was my handle, uh, T Bear, you know, Teddy Bear. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone in the truck has a little handle, and you know that was just mine. And everyone on deployment in my unit called me that. So, you know, I just turned my Twitter into that. Um, other as a nickname, I really don't have one. Although Brian Stan told me to go with uh, American AF. Um, <laughs> We're, we're, I think we're with it. I, I think every fan out there wants you to be called Tim the Mustache Johnson. I think it makes sense. <laughs> well, now I, I see a lot of people piggybacking on it now. Uh, last year, I've seen like three or four fighters start coming out with mustaches out of the blue, other than, you know, uh, Ian McCall, who's at his forever, but he, he's got a little more trendy one. Mine's kind of more of a um, Midwestern mustache. Yes, Darren Crookshank was rocking one at Risen. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I, I've been noticing them all the time now. Like, I never used to until lately. Uh, <laughs> now it seems like everyone's trying. Well, the nickname, is, is that still not going to be a thing? The mustache, tinted mustache, donchin'? It seems to be perfect, but you don't think so? Uh, no, we're still we're still playing and toying with a couple of them yet. All right, fair enough. Well, let, let's uh, talk about your last fight. Unfortunately, it didn't go your way. It was a first-round loss to Junior Albini, newcomer. How much did you actually know about him? Because he's a young guy. He's a heavyweight. There wasn't a ton of tape on him, I don't think. He's, you know, from Brazil, fairly unknown. Did you know much about him, or were you going in sort of just hoping you could, you know, do what you do best? Um, yeah, I didn't know too much on him, I guess. Just knew, you know, he had uh, some good leg kicks, some good hand, powerful hands. And being Brazilian, you just always assume that he's going to have good uh, jiu-jitsu. Um, but um, going in the fight, uh, really didn't have a game plan that, um, I'm normally accustomed to, we just didn't have the right, the training camp didn't line up right for us to really have me implement my normal kind of fighting style. So. Is that because you didn't know much about him or was something going on in your, in uh, your camp? Just, just a couple of little setbacks during camp that, you know, really, um, hindered, hindered the training and hindered the game plan altogether. So. Injuries? Uh, yeah, a couple of little bumps and bruises there. Um, and, um, just kind of, you know, not get having the grit, the grit and toughest. Not even that. Just having a good camp mentally, just just kind of sets your mind at ease. Even though um, I felt like I was in good shape, you know, and mentally that little seed, you're like, ah, oh, I don't think I got enough in this camp. So you just you just uh, just a little self doubt. Um, but you know, Junior you know, tip his hat. I mean, he came out he came out to you know to fight. A um, couple of those punches I threw like because I don't do that very often. As anyone who watches me fight, I'm not a, a stand and throw the leather as hard as I can across. And, you know, I had a couple crosses that just landed in flush. And I knew they landed in flush. And he just drew it down and came right back at me. I'm like, oh, you, see, you know, he's here to fight. All right. So, um, you know, you got to tip your hat to him. He's a hell of an uh, opponent. And uh, I wish him luck. He's got a big fight coming up against uh, Andre Arlovsky now. Um, so, you know, the more of them guys win, like, you know, with like uh, Volkov with, I won't get into that one, but Volkov fighting Struve, you know, I hope he wins. The better more they win, the better I look. Right. How do you deal with a loss like that? Are you a guy who, who really sits on it for a while and, and looks you, – obviously, you, you look at your mistake, but is it easy to get past loss? I know this was also your first stoppage loss, so it's a bit different. You you, you dropped a couple decisions, but this was a stoppage. Is, you know, people say you learn a lot more from losses than wins. Do you sort of – did have you realized that? Um. Yeah, I always – you know, being an athlete – you know, all my life and, you know, three different sports and then college, two different sports. And then, you know, finally getting the later years of college thing, I went down to wrestling. Um, but in any aspect of any sport, you always have to take something with it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty level headed when it comes to, to, to everything. Um, 
don't get mad. Don't make excuses because there's in any scenario, there's always something you can do better or more of. And you just got to break it down and figure out what it is. So in Fargo, North Dakota, we're at the Academy of Combat Arts. Have you been here training here regularly for for uh, as long yeah. as you remember? Yep. Um, this is where kind of I got my roots started at. And um, <laughs> I suppose when I started, you could call it training, but really I just came in and rolled around. Um, a lot of people are surprised to, to hear that, but a uh, coach, they will probably second it. Um, probably only been actually training, training the right way hard for about two and a half years. Otherwise, I just wrestled people, you know, and uh, just came in here and wrestled around, you know, just kind of had bodies in here. Um, so uh, that's kind of at least a positive for me to always look at. Like, I'm still just growing so much as a fighter. I haven't, played, I haven't peaked yet. I just got to keep uh, putting my uh, nose to the grind and developing. Now, this gym has had a few guys go to the UFC, including yourself. The other guys are, are no longer at the UFC. Is it difficult to train a gym as a UFC fighter with no other UFC fighters? Is that something you're, you, you know, you've been accustomed to and, you know, it's not too difficult? Or is it where, you know, it's a smaller gym, maybe you would be able to Im improve more at, you know, Jackson Wink, for example? Um the bodies that come in here, they, they'll push me. Like they'll they'll get me tired and they'll they'll work me, um, without a doubt. Um, there's a couple guys in the gym that still they have to keep me honest. Like I'm not like king of the gym by a long shot or anything like like that. And even you know there's probably three guys in here that really keep me honest. Um, but with that said, yeah, it's kind of nice going out. I go out to Extreme Couture quite a bit. Um, I'd say you know at least two weeks every two months or something about like that just to. You know, get a different different look, different bodies, a little higher caliber. Um, Roy Nelson, right? You train yeah, with him a lot. Yeah, train train with Roy a lot, and then you know, like uh, Heath Herring's out training out there, and um, uh, I can never remember his name. <laughs> Every time, I can never remember uh, the World Series of Fighting Heavyweight um, Champ. Yeah, got, yeah. Yep, I, yeah, he he's out there. And, and when you're sparring him, it's a fight. <laughs> like you know, he's got that Eastern Bloc training where you know sparring is a fight. So. Um, it's just, it's really good to get out there and get other looks. So you, you're obviously mostly here and then, uh, you know, every, every once in a while at Extreme Couture, do you, in staying here for the rest of your career, do you feel like you're still getting better? Um, well, you know, it's, it all depends. That's uh, kind of half the reason I'm finishing up school here, just kind of open up options. I went to, you know, went to school for way too long, <laughs> spent way too much money and too much time not to get a degree. So finishing up that. And then um, basically, uh, you know, a lot of plans are going to be uh, what happens on the next fight here. You know, um, I got one fight left on the contract, um, and uh, I'm taking taking this whole until the end of the year off to let my body heal. Um, got a pretty substantial one uh, injury here to let it heal. Um, so just kind of get the body ready and the mind ready and get kind of get stuff lined up and maybe, you know, just if nothing else, just kind of expand the options that I have. The injury, is that related to your last fight or, or in training? Yeah, um, uh, training uh, kind of uh, – the training kind of uh, aggravated it, and during the fight it totally gave way. Uh, so kind of, you know, it was a, it's a neck injury, so kind of got to treat it, treat it with care. And your UFC contract. The UFC, it's, it's been interesting ever since WMEIMG took over. Some guys are able to sign new co new deals really easily. Uh, you know, our, our, um, the w WMEIMG guys are doing really well. Other guys, you know, look at Lawrence Larkin. A lot of guys are going over to Bellator. Are you looking to resign with the UFC before your next fight, or do you think you might end up fighting out that contract? Um, you know, right now, I, I, I actually don't even know. Um, uh, I haven't talked to my agent too much about it. Um, I'm guessing I'll probably probably fight out this contract, so they'll see what they're going to – I don't think I'm in maybe a danger of not getting a new contract, but the next – depending on how the next fight goes, might be more on a financial standpoint of what I'm going to get offered. And so speaking of that, outside of fighting, you also do a couple things. Or just I know you're working at Rural Logistics. Yep. Is that still going on? Uh, nope. I uh, used to used to drive truck and uh, work at a bar and maybe drive Uber here at the same time. All three of them uh, at one point. Um, I don't do any of that now. I just work at a, I work at a bar about you know 30, 34 hours a week. keeps a keeps me busy. keeps a steady cash flow coming in. I don't like I don't like laying around and being if, I, if I'm sitting on the couch too much. I feel like I'm wasting my time. So I like keeping a good 
busy schedule. Do you like doing it, or is that simply just because you you know you're not making enough fighting? And you need something to pay the other half of the bill, so to speak. I, I enjoy doing it. And, um, yeah, if you, you know, just, I mean, it's the old, uh, old uh, conservative, you know, mentality. I mean, I like having, I like working and like having money coming in. Um, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that at all, you know. And you're also going back to school. Um, we were talking about that earlier at the uh, Minnesota University, the Minnesota, Minnesota State, State University, University Moorhead. Moorhead. Yep, that's where I went to school and wrestled at. And, um, I uh, took a five-year break off of, you know, having, you know, seven credits left to graduate, and I came back this semester, and I, the five, taking the five years off, the core change, like their, their generals change, the requirements change, so now I got to take two general classes, so now I got to go full, be a full-time student this semester too, so, but get it finished up and get it over with. So what are you taking? Uh, I will end up with a criminal justice degree now. Is that something you're going to do for sure post MMA when, whenever you retire, whether that's in three years, four years, whatever? Is that right now a backup plan? Um, no, I, I, you know, I really haven't even thought about uh, utilizing it at all. It's just uh, having it, getting it, um, whether I use it or not. You know, I spent a lot of time and money at, in college not to walk away with something, so I got to get it just for uh, maybe a little pride, self worth, and. You know, maybe get a pat on the back from a ma. <laughs> now, the, back to fighting the UFC heavyweight division. People look at it and say, oh, it's shallow. No one's there. N there's no contenders, blah, blah, blah. W as someone in the division, as someone who's number 15 as of today in the rankings at UFC.com, what are your thoughts on that? Is, is it sort of, do you, do you feel like people are, are looking at that maybe, you know, too closely and it's not actually a pretty good division? Or do you agree with what most people think? Um. I think it's kind of smoke and mirrors. They are right, and then they're wrong at the same time. Uh, you've had 10 guys dominate the division for how long? Every name in the top 10 was for the last, you know, six, seven years was the same, like, for the most part. And now they're kind of getting older and dropping off a little bit. And, you know, the new, the new guys coming up are uh, just, you know, they're new. People don't know them. They don't really like them. Or, I mean, don't – not. Not that they don't like them, they just don't know much about them yet. They're not their fan favorites yet. Um, as opposed to say, other than, you know, uh, Naganu and uh, and and uh, uh, Derek Lewis, I suppose. Uh, basically, everyone else is just kind of tripping their way up the ladder. So, What are your thoughts on Cain Velasquez? He's a guy, he's been out for already now a year again. He hasn't fought in a long time very you know been very inactive a lot of injuries but the guy if he's healthy he could be the best headweight on the planet do you think he comes back um i think he's got you know every athlete's got that one last little run in him and uh with injuries uh, everyone you know talking bad about aka about it and i mean they train hard they go hard that's a that's a definitely uh, kind of a wrestling mentality but you know gain's body i mean he's been abusing it since he's been five years old you know he's not a spring chicken anymore and no, i'm not a spring chicken anymore like um it's just uh you know you get old and stuff starts breaking so you gotta kind of um maybe not uh train train the old ways like you used to you gotta just kind of be smarter about it and stipe miocic she's the current ufc heavyweight champion do you see that rain lot you know going a long time i know he's actually hit the record already he, he's tied the record for most consecutive defenses but did, and, you know for the heavyweight division he's actually pretty young a, a lot of these guys you know Andre Olofsky is still there you know Josh Barnett Ben Rother they're all getting up there and they you know do you think Stipe is there for a little while I think he's there for a little bit yeah um he's just in his, like he's in a very good peak right now um both physically and mentally and, and anyone will tell you mentally is the better part of it than physically so um in my in my mind, he's got a couple defenses in him before maybe a chance that he gets knocked off. Do you think you know uh, Francis Ngannou was supposed to fight Junior Dos Santos coming up in a few weeks? That fight has been canceled. JDS, of course, had the Usada yep. thing. What do you, do you sort of see Stipe coming or, or fighting Francis? Is that the next fight, or does Kane find his way back? Um, I don't think. Uh, I think they wanted to give Francis one more, more before they gave him a shot yet. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I can't figure You know, you can't ever figure out what they're going to do with that stuff. But, um, you know, and even you got Tiberia coming up fighting Mike, Mark Hunt. You know, that's a, that's a big fight for him. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. They're trying to get these young, you know, these us young guys a little bit of a little bit of a push with the old ones. But, um, 
I think Daniel, and I know he was very, I think he was, uh, I haven't read too much into it. I know he was frustrated uh, privately, but I don't know. I think he was even publicly pretty, pretty pissed off and vocal about it. And that's very understandable. That was, you know, what was a fight three weeks away, two weeks away when it happened. Yeah. Something like that. So, you know, yeah. he's been training, he put in the work and, um, you know, when I was out there, like I was going to the facility and, you know, he was living there practically. Like he was uh, putting a lot of work into this fight. So, yeah, I think he's, uh, maybe he can push it a little bit and maybe get a shot. Now I got to talk to you about what everybody has been talking about probably for the past year. And that is, of course, Floyd Mayweather yeah. versus Conor McGregor happened this past weekend. Finally, yeah. you know, last year, this time it was still just a dream for some people, yeah. a, a nightmare away. for other yeah. people. Um, but it finally happened. Of course, Mayweather got the 10th round TKO, but it was a fight. It, yep. it actually was a good fight. It definitely exceeded my expectations, most people's. Um, give me your take. Were you a guy who you looked at it and, hey, the corner has been doing really well. Give it to him. It, it's a freak show. It's a circus. You know, yeah. once in a while it's good. Or were you completely anti Mayweather? I watched Connor? it. I wanted, you know, I, I, got, I, I drank the juice. Like, you know, I, um, when it was on, I was locked onto it. Um, the fight itself, um, I was impressed with Connor, you know, footwork, um, hand speed, uh, his defense, slipping punches on that. Uh, and then on the opposite of it, like, uh, Floyd, I haven't seen that Floyd fight in that style in probably 15 years, you know, he, uh, he came out and said he was going to move forward and punch. He wasn't even, you know, those first five rounds. I don't even think he was working, using footwork. He was just walking around and it was kind of interesting to see so you know we actually planted to see like you know is he is he just wanted like is he just here to get a paycheck like it really was it um didn't look like him and then you know and he kind of got fired up and started boxing again but um i think if nothing else everyone got to see an entertaining circus like you said you know it was a good it was an entertaining fight um and yeah if it was switched around you know Floyd doesn't make it out of the first two minutes. <laughs> so back to you. Um, what is next for you? You already said you're not going to fight till 2018, so it's you know, you're going to take another half a year off or so. Mm -hmm. You're you're still doing your university. That'll be done fairly soon, I guess. No, another semester, um, recovering, yep. getting better, and then your, your last fight and see where that goes. Yep. Is that sort of the plan? Yep. No, that's kind of the plan. Um, I don't know. I think they. I think they. Uh, I think I deserve a, a bone to get thrown my way. I don't know how my 12 ranked fighters in any weight class would have fought a day would have fought a debut. So, <laughs> um, but you know, luckily it didn't knock me down too far. But uh, it's kind of where I it kind of stands where I where I'm at, where I'm at right now. Like I'm I'm not a quite over that hump yet. And as of right now, like I'm pretty sure I'm kind of in that uh, you know gatekeeper range for you know keeping the talent up like uh, that. 15, 13, 14, 12 area right now. So, um, you know, I can accept that role at the moment, but um, when time comes to, I hope I get a shot to get, you know, like I wanted to, like, um, you know, after that, this, you know, if I plan to get that win, if I would've got that win, um, I probably still would've had to take time off, but um, I was hoping to get like a fight against like uh, Derek Lewis, who was at seven or um, someone around that area, just because just I felt maybe it was a deserving. I guess I guess you feel as you know fighters have to believe in themselves. I guess you believe that you can still get to th those higher rankings, you know, five, six, seven area. Yeah, no, um, just because I know where my leaps and bounds have came and where they haven't. Um, fortunately, haven't put it all together in the ring yet against uh, you know the last fight against Daniel. Um, like I hated that fight. Like I got done with that fight, I was disgusted with myself. I didn't do anything. Like. It's like, what are you doing? I didn't show anything. Didn't even like. It felt like I took two steps back in that fight. But the camp and like my hands and my footwork and everything were just better than I've ever been. But I got in the fight and froze. Like so, it's just one of those fighting things happens. Um, so I know that uh, I got a I got a good uh, a good style that I can. Um, you know, a lot of fans like look at it as grimy but, and you know dirty and all that. I don't like doing that for a little bit. I like I like wearing those big heavyweight arm down a little bit, so one punch maybe isn't gonna knock you down, um, and then have the ability to make it more of a exciting fight. As far as that Omi Lanechuk fight earlier this year, you're in, in the, the end of March, I believe it was. Is that something you just have to get past mentally, being able to or, or avoiding, you know, as you said, freezing in the cage. You, yeah. you, you did so well in training, and then you 
you, you just froze. You got the win, but it, you know, it, you, you, as you said, it wasn't. You didn't go out there and knock him out in the first round. Is that something? Is that all mental, or or, or is something else? Uh, I think it has to do, you know, <laughs> with the universe. You know, something. You just wake up. Some every, nothing's. Something's not feeling right. Um, you try telling you everything. You try telling yourself everything's fine. You get in there and your first couple steps, your first couple throws, it just isn't feeling smooth. And so you just got to kind of fight, you know, it's like fighting in molasses. <laughs> now you're an incredibly gritty fighter. And uh, sometimes it makes for, you know, you're on top of guys and they just can't get up. And maybe it's not always the, for, for casual fans, they don't always love those types of fights, but they're effective to get the job done. And ultimately you're, you're after the money more than anything. You, your last, or, you, you're three and three in the UFC. Your debut was a finish, and since then you you had two de- two yep. uh, decisions. Is another finish something you you're going after? Your next fight is that something you, at the top yeah. of the list as far as what you want to do? Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely want to get back in there. Like you know, even the fight against Volkov, you know, that was a decision. But I thought there was rewatching it a handful of times, you know, um, which I still think I got two rounds. But um, they. Uh, I thought fans saw a pretty gritty, entertaining fight. I mean, we're not we're not lightweights out there throwing a lot of punches, but you know, it was pretty active and stuff. I was really happy with how you know that fight, uh, the output was during that fight. Um, and but you know, maybe maybe get back to maybe get back to the roots a little bit more. You know, take someone down, beat them up, they get back up, take them back down, and beat them up some more. You know. Now, to end things off, just a couple of predictions. UFC 215 in Edmonton, Demetrius Johnson, Ray Borg, as well as Amanda Nunes DJ. versus Valentina Shevchenko. DJ. And for the women's title fight? Uh, it's a tougher one. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's going to win that one. That one's going to... Uh, I'm not picking that one. That one, I'm, I'm throwing it up to the toss-up. 216, yeah. Kevin Lee, Tony Ferguson for the interim lightweight title. That makes no sense because Connor is now right. done. And wow. and he probably, Connor will probably fight in ATS anyways. But it's happening. Don't know if this main event, Kevin Lee or Ferguson. Ah, uh, Ferguson. And trying to think the 217 main event that is, what is it again? Uh, that's the Madison yeah. Square Garden. I don't remember, so we'll just end things yeah, there. Right. Tim, do appreciate the time. If you want to say where you can find uh, you on social media, any sponsors, whatever, feel free. Yep, uh, it's, uh, it's good. You can find me on social media. Um, uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram are uh, T Bear Tim. Um, Facebook's just Timothy Johnson athlete page. You should be able to find it. Um, there's only about two million Timothy Johnsons. Um, and uh, like sponsorship, my my gym here, my strength conditioning coach, uh, Power by Design Fitness, uh, Eric, by Eric Sweeney. Um, at the Metro Flex gym here in uh, Fargo, it was a pretty awesome gym. Like that was a, that was kind of a, a missing link finding him, and uh, my gym here, the Academy of Combat Arts in Fargo. I remember what it was, Bisbing and GSP. Ah, uh, oh man, another I, tough I one. Think, now I got to think. Now I got to think of old GSP. Ugh, four years ago, I'd been like GSP, no problem. Bisbing's old too. You know, I'm gonna go with GSP. Awesome, Tim. Thank you very much for the time.